I'm so glad to spend time with you in this teaching, and I believe that the Lord, our God, loves us so much, and He wants to feed you with good spiritual food and build your faith. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs, chapter 3, verses 5 to 6, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek His will in all you do, and He will show you which path to take. I believe that in this teaching, He will give you understanding. He will really give you light, revelation, and show you how you can walk in this world, how you live successfully. God bless you. See you in the teaching. This morning, I would like to continue to talk about divine protection, and we're going to talk about another way that God protects us. Let us pray. Father, we thank you so much for your love for us, and you feed us with good spiritual food, Lord. We want to learn, we want to believe, we want to experience and practice what we learn, Father. I know, Lord, you never lie. Your words will come to pass, Lord. And we shall experience what you say, Lord. We thank you for your kindness, your mercy and love for us, Lord, that you want to protect us. You want us to live a long life, to finish our race, our course to the end, Lord. No one in this church is going to die young. No one going to get into the accident and die too soon. No cancer and sickness and disease can torture them and can take their life away, Father. We believe your protection will be upon your church. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. In the book of Luke chapter 9, the Lord Jesus called his disciple in and said that, I give you power and authority to cast demons out and to heal all sickness. The question is, disease, sickness, and demons, are they dangerous to us? Can they destroy us if we don't have God's protection? Yes. So many people died of sickness, of cancer, and demons attacked them. In fact, a lot of accidents are not accidents. A lot of accidents are set up by the devil. For example, you may be driving to an intersection, and the devil prepares somebody who just have been drinking for eight hours with alcohol in the blood. And that guy comes at the intersection at the time that you show up there. It's a setup. And then that guy hit your car and you got into accident. So a lot of things happen by the setup of the devil. The devil set up to kill, to steal, and to destroy. That's why we need God's protection all the time. We have the enemy of our soul. Luke chapter 9, verses 1 to 5, the Bible says, Then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power. Everyone say power. And authority over the, all demons and to cure diseases. He sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. And he said to them, Take nothing for the journey, neither staffs, nor bag, nor bread, nor money. And do not have two tunics apiece. Whatever house you enter, stay there, and from there, depart. And whoever will not receive you when you go out of that city, shake off the very dust from your feet as a testimony against them. Jesus said, I give you, disciple, the power and authority. What is trying to kill us and destroy us? There's so many things. Accident, crime, violent, natural calamity, COVID-19, virus, sickness and disease, demons, evil people who try to spam you and get money out of you and cheat you. So many things in the world that try to destroy your finances, your physical health, your relationship, your kids, your work, and your life. We need the protection from God. And one of the ways that God protects us is to give us power and authority over all demons and over all diseases. We have power and authority. When we have power over demons, 
Demons cannot run over our life. When we have power and authority over sickness, sickness cannot run over our life. We can tell them to leave and get out of my life, get out of my home as soon as possible. Everyone say, I have power. power. Everyone say, I have authority. authority. In the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus sent the disciple to preach the gospel. And he said, everywhere you go to preach the gospel, heal the sick. I'm glad that everywhere I went to preach the gospel, people got healed from sickness and demons come out from people everywhere. Because healing and deliverance are the evidence of the good news. Healing happened together with preaching and proclamation of the good news. The good news include healing and deliverance. Luke chapter 4, 18 to 20. The spirit of the Lord is upon me, mean me, Jesus, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, preaching the gospel. He has sent me to heal, everyone say heal, heal. the brokenhearted. Therefore, when you preach the gospel, you can expect to see healing happen. To proclaim liberty to the captives, deliverance from the demon and satanic attack and recovery of sight to the blind to set at liberty those who are oppressed to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Then he closed the book and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. You can see preaching the gospel come along with healing, freedom, and deliverance. Luke chapter 9 verse 6. I will read a lot of scripture here to convince you. So they departed and went through the towns preaching the gospel and healing everywhere. We should expect to see divine healings when we preach the gospel. Amen? Amen. When we pray for the sick, the sick shall be healed. Why? Because we have authority and power to command sickness to leave. A lot of Christians believe in the wrong doctrine. The wrong doctrine say that miracles, signs and wonders, healing and deliverance already has been done. After the 12 disciple or the 12 apostle died, no more miracles, no more healings, no more signs and wonders. That is a wrong doctrine because signs and wonders still going on. Not just only the 12 disciple, but also to the 70 disciple and also to the early church disciple in the book of Acts, and even to today. Luke chapter 10, verse 1. Should we expect signs and wonders? Should we expect to use power and authority in preaching the gospel? Yes, we should expect. And after these things, the Lord appointed 70 others also. This is not the 12 apostles. 70 others. And sent them two by two before his face into every city and place where he himself was about to go. Verse 9, and heal the sick there and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near you. Jesus sent the 70 disciples out to preach the gospel. He gave them authority and power and they could heal the sick. Verse 17, then the 70 returned with joy, like me. I returned to New Hope with joy after I came back from Switzerland because I saw so many souls saved. I, we baptized four people there. And so many people get healed. Actually, one lady came from another city. She came out to be prayed for. I cast the man out of her. She got up. She said, oh, the knee pain is gone. The owner of the Thai restaurant there that just got saved, she said her knee is so bad. She sit down and he, she said, can you pray for me? I just kneel down on the ground and lay hand on her. She got up. Oh, my knee, the healing. I don't have knee pain anymore. <laughs> Praise God. So when the righteous walk in God's authority and the power of God is demonstrating the healing and the deliverance, the Bible says that those who are saved, those who are delivered and healed rejoice. They rejoice. Luke chapter 10, verse 17, then the 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. Wow, the 12 disciple, the 70 disciple, and the early church disciple. 
The question is, are you a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ? Are you? Do you believe in Jesus? Do you believe that he gives you power and authority? Do you believe in the name of Jesus Christ? Do you believe that disease and demons are afraid of you? Do you believe that the Holy Spirit is with you? And he gives you power and authority. Do you believe that you can rule over demons and diseases? Every time I pray for the sick, I pray for myself or pray for uh, my family members, I say, I, I rule over this sickness. I have authority and power. The 70 elders, uh, the 70 disciples came back with joy. And they say, wow, we're so happy, we're so excited. Because even demons are subject to us. And when we pray for the sick, the sick get healed. Demon ran out. The sickness cannot be around people. They're so excited. They're so joyful. Unfortunately, many Christians was taught by, were taught by religions that miracles and signs and wonders are not happening today anymore. Oh, it would be glad that I can live in the time of Jesus Christ that I could see the miracle Jesus did. Wow, I would be glad that I will be selected of the one of the 70 disciples or the one of the 12 apostles. Wow, I would be one of them. It would be nice that I can have power and authority like them, like the 12 apostles and the 70 disciples in the Bible. I want to tell you the good news. You have the same Jesus in you. You have the same Holy Spirit in you. You have the same name, the name of Jesus with you. You have the same power and authority with you. But the key is, do you believe it? Do you exercise it? You have the same Holy Spirit who live in the life of the apostles. You have. You look so excited. Everyone like, really? I'm excited. Do you have the same Holy Spirit? Amen? When you believe in something, you get excited. If you believe me that I'm going to give you a check with $20,000 on the check, will you get excited? Now, when we talk about $20,000, everyone get excited. But the Holy Spirit is bigger than the $20,000. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Hallelujah. We have the same Holy Spirit. We have the name of Jesus. We have the power and authority like the early church disciples. Luke chapter 10, 19, uh, 17 to 18. Luke chapter 10, 17 and 18. Then the 70 returned with joy saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. When you pray with the power and the authority of heaven in the name of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Spirit, Satan will not just float down from heaven like the Superman movie, just float down like this. He falls like lightning. He falls quickly. He has to run away from you quickly. Because you believe in the power that God has given to you. Did God give power only to the 12 and to the 70? Look at Luke chapter 10 verse 19. Behold, I give you. Who is you? You and me. The believers. The authority to trample on serpents and scorpions. And over all the power of the enemy. Serpents and scorpions are demons. Enemy is Satan. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. What Jesus said in Luke chapter 10 verse 19 here is not ambiguous. It's not wavering. It's bold. He said, I give you. He did not say, uh, when I have a good mood, I will give to you. Or maybe Monday, but not Tuesday. Oh, if you smile a little bit more, I give you power. I'm not sure I'm going to give you today. It depends on my mood. Did he say that? He said, I give you 
power and authority. Do you get it? Do you believe it? Can you show sign of belief a little bit more? I believe it. I don't know about you. I believe it. I believe that I can command sickness to leave. I can command demons to leave from people. Amen. There was one lady in Switzerland. Every time I walk close to her, demons start to come out. I haven't said anything. Demons start to come out of her, like that, and just keep coming out, keep coming out. Just look at her, keep coming out, because God gave us authority and power. The power of God back up our authority from heaven. We have the authority, and when we walk in God's authority and walk in the power of God all the days of our life, Jesus said, "Nothing, nothing, including COVID-19, include the sickness and disease and cancer and demons. Nothing shall be any mean hurt you." Nothing shall by any means hurt you. This is not my word. This is the word of Jesus Christ. Everyone say, nothing Nothing. shall by any means means hurt me. me. You believe that? Can you command demons and sickness to leave your body so you live a long life? Can you command? You can command it. Some people say, oh, the word in the Bible is nice, but I don't know. We never know. It may happen to some, but not me. No, you need to believe. We believe what Jesus said. We believe what he promised us, that we can trample on the lion, on the wolf, on the viper, serpents, and scorpions. We can Step on. We can crash on the things that can bite us, that can really sting us, kill us, hurt us, and damage us. We can. This is how God protects us. The power of God will back us up. Amen? How does God protect us? Number one, by putting the canopy of power protection over us. Number two, He sent His powerful angels to protect us. Number three, he warned us. We need to heed his warning. And number four, by giving us authority and power. Everyone, make your hand this way. Everyone say, I have authority. I have power. power. (laughs) Nothing can hurt us. Amen? Amen. Luke chapter 4, verse 36. Then they were all amazed and spoke among themselves, saying, what a word, one word, what a word, not many words, what a word this is. For with authority and power, he commands the unclean spirits, and they come out. Not many words. He just say, out, go out. He doesn't have to pray for three hours. He says, command with one word. Jesus is a good example to us. He used authority and power, and he commanded evil spirit to get out from people. The evil spirit cannot kill these people. The 12 apostles did the same thing. The 70 disciples did the same thing. The early church disciples in the book of Acts did the same thing. Can we do the same thing? Can we command? Can we use power and authority? But whatever tried to kill us, Come against us, have to leave from our home, from our babies, from our own life, from our wife, our husband. They have to leave. You notice that the disciples did not talk about the scribes and the Pharisees here and the Sadducees. No, nothing in the Bible talks about the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and the scribes using authority in the name of Jesus. Only the disciple. And we are the disciple. Luke chapter 4, verses 37 to 38. And the report about him, about Jesus, went out into every place in the surrounding region. Now he arose from the synagogue and entered Simon's house. But Simon's wife's mother was sick 
with a high fever. And they make requests of him concerning her. They ask him to heal her. You need to understand this. In that generation, there was no Tylenol. There was no acetaminophen and ibuprofen and Advil and no high technology doctor like today. Thank God for the doctor. Thank God that the doctor know how to perform surgery. But in that generation, fever can kill her. She may have fever from abscess, maybe from a flu, maybe from a bladder infection. You know, older people tend to have bladder infection, especially women. The fever comes, and the, when the bacteria go all over the body, the patient will become septic. Septic means bacteria start to impact the whole body, and the person can die. Can fever kill a lady like this? The mother-in-law of the apostle Peter. Yes, fever can kill. And they beg Jesus. What did he do? Did he kneel down and say, let's pray together. God, Father, please spare this lady. We're going to fast and pray for 10 hours. We're going to keep praying for her. God, please, please spare her. We cry. Lord, don't let her die. Did he do that? Look at verse 39. So he stood over her and rebuked the fever. Go! And it left her. And immediately she arose and served him, served them. How did Jesus save this woman from death, from terrible sickness and disease? By using his authority and power. He did not pray to the Father. He used authority. He did not beg the Father. This is a great example to all of us. When you get sick, or when your kids get sick, or when your spouse gets sick, you just go to your spouse and say, in the name of Jesus, you have to leave this sickness. Amen? That because you have authority, you have power, you can rebuke the fever. But some of you may say, pass aloud, give me a break. This is Jesus. I'm not Jesus. You're going to look at the scripture more that you can do it too. Not just only Jesus, the 12 did it. The 70 did it. The disciple in the book of Acts did it too. Jesus was not praying to the Father. Jesus spoke words of power and authority against sickness and disease and against demon. Should we do that? Yes. Can fever hear your voice? Yes. Can demons hear your voice? Yes. Can cancer hear your voice? Yes. The voice of authority. You have to leave. Get out of here. You are healed. Can you command? Yes. Millions of Christians don't believe in this Teaching. They are afraid of infection. They are afraid of cancer. For you and me in New Hope International Church, when somebody in your family gets sick, you jump up on your feet of faith and say, Go in Jesus' name. Amen. You exercise your authority. Cancer, you have to go in Jesus' name. Amen. You have back pain. Back pain, you have to go in Jesus' name. You speak by faith. You exercise your authority and power. How many percentage of Christians in the world believe in this teaching in the Bible? Very rare. In, it's amazing. Immediately after she got healed, before she got healed, everyone was serving her. Oh, honey, honey, I'll get water for you. Uh, we will get the uh, nice rice soup for you. You're hungry, honey. But after she got healed by Jesus, things turned around. <laughs> right away, immediately, she got out of the bed and she served other people. Can God turn your situation around suddenly? From being a sick person to be the servant and serve other people? 
Can God turn it around? How quickly can He turn it around? Immediately He can turn it around. But you need to exercise your power and authority. Sickness and disease can kill people. Demon can destroy people. But He has given us authority and power over the devil, over demons, over sicknesses and disease. My brother and sister, God intends for all of us to be safe, protected, and live a long life that we can run the race, we can do what God called us to do until we get to the finish line. He doesn't want us to have our lifespan short or cut off. He wants us to live a full length of our days on earth until we get really old and we can serve God and finish the race. And how can we live a long life to the old age and finish the race? We need God protection. And one of the ways that God protects us is to give us authority and power. To command the killer, the demon and sickness and disease to get out of our home. Amen? Luke chapter 8 verse 22. Now it happened on a certain day that he got into a boat with his disciples. Now he said to them, let us cross over to the other side of the lake and they launch out. Let me explain this scripture. Number one, the disciple rode on the boat with the Lord Jesus Christ. Two, who told them to get under the boat? Jesus. Is that right? Okay, listen carefully. I try to show you the principle here. Number one, they were with Jesus. Number two, the person who told them to get into the boat was Jesus. Number three, did Jesus say that, hey, let's get out on the boat and get into the middle of the lake and sing and die there? Did he say that? Did he say we're going to die in the middle of the ocean or in the middle of the lake? No, he said, we will get to the other side. What is the principle here? When you walk with Jesus faithfully, Jesus is with you. Everywhere you go, everything you do, you have relationship with him. And you obey what he say. He say, go right, I go right. He said, don't get involved with that company, you're going to get into trouble, we back off. He said, go to invest in that company, you invest. Marry that person, you marry. He said, don't marry that person, you're going to get into trouble, you don't marry. You just obey him. You are in the same boat with him. And when you're in the same boat with him, you can rest. You can fall asleep in the back seat, on the boat, on the airplane, on the couch, and on the ground. You can re relax because you know the Lord tell you what to do. And in the course that he tell you what to do, you will be protected and the grace of God going to be on your life. Amen? Look at what Jesus did. Luke 8, 23. But as they sailed, he fell asleep and a windstorm came down on the lake and they were filling with water. Wow, they all soak up with water. And were in jeopardy. They were in big danger. That storm can kill them. The boat could sink, they could be drowned, and they can die in the middle of the lake. This is scary. What happened? With that storm in the middle of their travel. Did Jesus say, let's go halfway and sink and die? What did he say? We're going to go to the other side. Okay. What happened? They were so scared, they wake Jesus up. Master, master, we're going to perish. We're going to die. The boat is going to sink here. Please do something. Lord Jesus. They wake Jesus up. And when Jesus woke up, what did he do? Did he kneel down? He kneeled down in the boat. Father in heaven, <laughs> we're going to die. The storm is so terrible. Could you please save us? Could you please spare our life here? 
We're going to fast and pray in the next few minutes here. We're not going to eat anything, no, no Coke, no, nothing, no Sprite. We're going to fast Coke and Sprite. Pray, God save me. Did he do that? Let's look at the Bible. Luke chapter 8, verse 24. We are talking about power and authority here, okay? Power, everyone say power. power. Everyone say authority. authority. And they came to him and awoke him, saying, Master, Master, we are perishing. Then he arose and rebuked the wind and the raging of the water, and they ceased, and they, there was a calm. What did he do? Did he use authority and power to command the storm and the wind and the wave to stop? Can we do the same thing? Did Jesus say, after he calmed the storm, did Jesus say, oh, you make a right choice that you wake me up because I'm the only one in the whole universe, in the whole human history who can calm the storm like this. You are so lucky I'm here with you and you wake me up. You made the right choice to wake me up. I'm the guy going to stop the storm. Did he say that? Look at verse 25. But he said to them, where is your faith? And they were afraid and marveled, saying to one another, who can this be? For he commands even the winds and water, and they obey him. Why did he say, where is your faith? What does it mean? Okay, number one, that storm did not come from the Father. Because if that storm came from the Father, he would not be able to rebuke it. The storm came from the devil who wanted to kill them. Number two, why did he say, where is your faith? Okay, let me read another scripture. Matthew 17, 20. Matthew 17, 20. And so Jesus said to them, because of your unbelief, for surely I say to you, if you have faith, as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain or storm or rain or whatever, move from here to there and it will be moved and nothing will be impossible for you. What Jesus tried to say is this. Actually, you don't have to wake me up. Let me sleep. I need to rest. You don't need to wake me up. You can do it yourself. You can command the storm. I give you authority and power. You can command the storm of your life to stop. You can command the sickness in your body to go away. Amen? Amen. Do you have authority? Yes. Do you have power? Yes. In the name of Jesus. Yes. Are you believers? Yes. You believe in the power of the Holy Spirit? Yes. Do you believe in the power of the name of Jesus Christ? Yes. Jesus spoke to a fig tree and the fig tree wither. And Jesus showed the disciple, if you can speak, with power and authority, God will do something for you. You need to exercise your authority and use the power that God has given to you. So from now on, when you get sick, what are you going to do? Huh? You use authority and power to say to the sickness, leave my body right now. Don't take me wrong. I'm not against going to see doctor. But while you go to see doctor and taking some medication, while you're waiting for God to perform a miracle, you need to use the authority. Jesus was operating as a man, not as God. And he is the best example to us. He showed us how we can walk in authority and power. He tried to tell the disciple that you could do it. You don't need to wake me up. Amen? Romans chapter 8, verse 26. Then they sailed to the country of Gadarenes, which is opposite Galilee. Did they arrive the destination? Did the storm kill them? Did they come out from the storm? Were they protected by God's authority and power? Is this protection? Okay, let me conclude this sermon by telling you that you have two choices in your life regarding storms and regarding the threatening 
problem in your life that can kill you. In Acts chapter 2, verses 9 to 44, I'm not going to read that for now. Acts 27, verses 9 to 44, I read this scripture a long time ago in this series of teaching regarding warning. Paul was arrested by the Roman soldier. He and the Roman soldier and the uh, captain and also the sailor and the crews of the ship went on the ship to go to another city. And while they were traveling, God told Paul, tell them, don't go. Stay here. So Paul heard while he was praying, don't go. He heard the warning of the Holy Spirit. So the apostle Paul went to the captain, the crews, and the soldier, Roman soldier, and say, hey, guy, I pray, and God told me, let's stay here. Don't go now. Let's wait until everything settled down. Don't leave. But Paul was not under control. Paul could not control the situation. The chip did not belong to him. The Roman soldier would not listen to him. The captain did not listen to him. They kept on going. And they faced a big storm. The boat or the ship was totally destroyed. They're all floating in the water in the middle of the ocean on a plank or on a, some piece of wood or something. But before this happened, Paul prayed to God, God, they did not listen to me. Could you please save my life that I will not die in this ocean? And not only that, I beg you, I, I ask you, Lord, that you will save everyone on the boat. Every single one, 100% will be saved. And the angel appeared to him on the boat before the storm came. The angel said, God heard your prayer. He promised that he's going to save everybody. But because they did not listen to the warning, the boat was totally destroyed. You look at the difference here. This one, Jesus told them they're going to get to the other side. Jesus was in the middle, and they listened to Jesus. And the storm came. When you serve God, when you do something for God, the storm is going to come because the devil is not happy. He's going to try to stop you and kill you. The storm came, and Jesus used his authority and power to say, storm, stop right now. And the whole group, the 12 disciples and Jesus got delivered from the storm and reached to the destiny. Everyone said, deliver form. <laughs> but what is opposite is Paul and the crews in the boat. They got delivered too. They didn't die. They did not sink under the water and die. They did not uh, get killed by the storm. They got delivered too because Paul prayed. But they del were delivered through the storm. Everyone say form. Everyone say true. Which one do you like? Huh? You want to go through? Not me. I don't want to go through storm. <laughs> I don't want to storm, keep going and going, going, going and, and everything until I went through the storm, oh, I survived. No, I want to get delivered from, not true. The storm has to stop. <laughs> I don't want to go through it. Which one do you choose again? From. Thank God, you understand the English word now. We get delivered from the storm, just like Paul. Amen? Not through the storm. The enemy will try to hinder you, sending lots of problems to come against you. But anytime the problem come up, stand up on your feet. Get out of here. Get out. You cannot stop me. Everyone stand up and do like this. Everyone says, stop. stop. Get out of here. Yeah. Oh, ah. praise God, you can sit down. <laughs> My brothers and sisters, don't ignore the warnings of the Lord. Be led by the Holy Spirit. Always have Jesus in the midst of your life. 
always ride with Jesus. Amen? Amen. Don't be foolish by doing your own things. Jesus say to you something, go, don't go there, go here. You say, oh, no, I, I'm smart. I know I can go this way. And you keep going, you can go through the storm. You may not die, <laughs> but you go through the storm. And God still, our God is a merciful God. I just wrote a lesson yesterday, a lesson called that victory out of your mistake. People can make mistakes because they don't listen to the warning of God. But God still has mercy. His mercies are new every morning. He can still save you from the storm of life. But you have to go through it. I don't want to go through the storm. How can I avoid the storm? Go through the storm. I need to listen to God's leading. I need to humble myself and obey God and make sure I stay with God and exercise my authority and power. Acts chapter 27, verses 9 to 11. What happened to Paul and the ship there? Now, when much time had been spent and sailing was now dangerous because the fast was already over, Paul advised them, saying, Men, I perceive that this voyage will end with disaster and much loss, not only of the cargo and ship, but also our life. Nevertheless, the centurion was more persuaded by the helpsman and the owner of the ship than by the things spoken by Paul. Paul had no control. He had to go through the storm with them because they did not listen to the warnings of the Lord. Amen? In conclusion, the teaching today. Number one, if you want to be protected by God, you need to walk in the love of God. You need to obey Him. You need to be led by the Holy Spirit. Always let the Lord Jesus lead you everywhere you go. Your investment, your relationship, let Him be in your boat. Don't kick Him out from your boat. Let Him stay there with you. Have relationship with God, with the Holy Spirit. Listen to the Holy Spirit. Heed the voice of the Holy Spirit. Submit. Obey, don't be stubborn, don't be smart on your own, follow the Holy Spirit. And when the devil sends a storm to you, or sickness or demon come to attack you, how should you respond? Huh? How? Do you have power? In the name of Jesus? Do you have authority? What do you do? With sickness, disease, and the storm. Get out of here. In Jesus' name. You use your authority. Amen? This is the way I live for many years now. Because I learned this lesson long time ago. And I understand that I have authority and power in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen? How many people have some sickness right now in your body? Raise your hand up. You have some sickness? Can you put your hand on that part of your body? Okay. Put your hand on it. Now, let's command together. Maybe you have lung problem, you have diabetes or high blood pressure, you have something to put your hand on your body. How many people believe you have power? Yes. How many people believe that the Holy Spirit is with you? Yes. You have authority. You're going to do by faith? Yes. You believe? Yes. Let's command. In the, name of Jesus, In the name of Jesus, I command you. I command you. Sickness, and disease, Sickness and disease and demons. And demons. You, have to leave my body. you have to leave my body. Right now, right now. You, cannot you cannot hurt me. I have power from God. The authority from God. I command you to leave in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. How many people faced financial trouble? You try to do things, but you always fail financially. 
could not get a job or whatever or debt. How many people face financial difficulties? Okay, let's command together. Amen? Amen. God going to turn things around for you. Let's command together. In the name of Jesus, Jesus, I command command financial troubles troubles to go away from my life. life. You have to go. go. I am blessed. blessed. I'm successful. successful. I'm highly favored. favored. The blessing of the Lord Lord. overtake me. In Jesus' name, name. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. How many people are facing a mountain, a storm in your life right now? A mountain or storm? Okay. Those who face mountain and storm, could you stand up? And we're going to command together. Amen? Maybe financial, maybe relationship thing, maybe um, some physical health or something. Okay, let's command together. In the name of Jesus, I have power. I have authority that comes from heaven. I command this mountain, this storm in my life. Shut your mouth. Get out of here. Get out of my life. My home. Now, things will turn around. Supernatural breakthroughs happen in my life. Good breaks. You have to leave in the name of Jesus. I believe and I declare. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Do you believe? Hallelujah. I want to make sure that from now on, you can exercise the authority and power in your life. But in order to do that, do that, you need to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. You need to be a born-again Christian. So I just want to make sure that you are born again so that from now on, you will have power and authority. Amen? Amen. Actually, I got this experience since I was a maybe six-month-old Christian. When I was a six-month-old Christian, I was not even baptized with the Holy Spirit speaking in tongue yet. I find out that one of my kids have a mass in the body. So I pray for my kid. In the name of Jesus, I command the mass to leave, go away, and the mass disappear. Next morning, it's gone. For some reason, a few years later, I got a lump on my chest here. I can put, on the, put pressure on the lump there, and it hurts. Maybe abscess, maybe something, I don't know. Maybe a tumor. So the same thing, I put my hand on the lump, on my chest. You have to go in Jesus' name. Next morning, gone. Every believer has the right to exercise your authority that has been given to you by Jesus Christ. Amen? Okay, make sure we are really born again. Can we pray again to make sure we are born again. You like to pray with me? Okay. Father in heaven, I want to make sure, Lord, I'm a born again Christian. I am a disciple of Jesus Christ. Lord, I repent of my sin. I invite Jesus Christ to be on the throne of my life. I surrender to you. Lord Jesus, You are my Lord and my Savior. You were raised from the dead on the third day. You are alive now at the right hand of the Father. Oh, Lord Jesus, I am born again indeed. My name is recorded in the book of life of the Lamb. I have the Holy Spirit in me. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You have given me authority and power. From today on, 
I shall see victory. Demons, sicknesses, storms, and mountains in my life cannot be there. I'm going to experience protection, deliverance, and victory in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I declare and I believe. Amen. <laughs> wow, wonderful. I love it. <laughs> Thank you, Lord Jesus. May the Lord really guide you to your promised land. Thank you for listening to the whole teaching. God promises in Isaiah 48, verses 17 to 19. This is what the Lord says, Your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I am the Lord your God who teaches you what is best for you, who directs you in the way you should go. If only you had paid attention to my commands, your peace would have been like a river, your righteousness like the waves of the sea, your descendants would have been like the sand, your children like its numberless grains, their name would never be cut off nor destroyed from before me. I believe the Lord will direct you, bless you, and bless your offspring to the thousand generation because you pay attention to the word of the Lord and obey Him. God bless you. God poured his fire on the day of Pentecost. And he still opened heaven to pour out his fire in our generation. May the fire of the Lord burn on the inside of you. Brings revival into your life. Send you out to preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. May He use you to be a carrier of the fire of revival. May the Lord anoint you. May the fire of God burn every day on the inside of you. And the Lord will be glorified through you. May the grace of God work in your life and you become fruitful and you will have many rewards in heaven. May the Lord get the glory through your life.